he said a wooden house is that and then in english they call them wigwams but in our punker language they call them teeth near there but he told me they're made out of bark and you know we still got a lot of pictures of the constructions i don't know if you guys got to see them angie or robert but uh our punker people down here even in the the, the around 1930 something maybe 35 or something they still made some homes like that way, and they did, but then they turned into more like a dancing arenas for the summertime. But they they made them, they say, in the old way that we made them when we were in the swamplands, or the woodlands, one might say. But those are called teats, now. They, well, that's what I was told anyway. I don't know what that dictionary says. I've I seen a lot of stuff in there that uh, they needed correction because of typos and all the other stuff, and I just haven't had the time to go all the way through it. I just try to go by my mind. You know, down here I get a lot of criticism, uh, Angie and Robert. They all uh, say, uh, they say, oh, Eagle, Eagle learned punka in prison. Let me tell you something. I got my little sister Candace, one that they call Mina Bobby. Anyway, Mina Bobby, that's my little sister, my baby sister. I got a book that's got about 2,000 words in it that I made and I gave it to her about maybe, I don't know, 10 years ago, 11 years ago. You know, when I was in there, I didn't have no, I wish I had a dictionary. I wish I had that. Grandma uh, Elizabeth Stabler stuff that I got here recently. I wish I had a punk dictionary that came out in 2019, 56 days before I was released. I wish I had that book uh, for years. I got it. The, the, the last year I was in prison from uh, Uncle Mark Sweatin and Lincoln, and I helped write that book. I got letters of accommodation from the University of Nebraska, Lincoln, while I was in prison. And I got all the letters that he wrote me while I was in there asking me questions and talking to me and asking me what I thought about this or that. And, you know, I don't tell nobody that, but I got letters. You know, my sister Carla, she, she holds that original letter, you know, that I did that. I don't want to be known for nothing. You know, there's one thing that we got to be known for is helping the tribe. How can we do it? You know, whatever you did in the past, if it wasn't good, try something different. And that's what I go by because I wasn't a good person, but I did all I could by changing. And I wish I had all these uh, materials and by Aunt Ala, Santa, Linge. I didn't have all that stuff in there that people got today. All I had was in my mind. And then when I got to question Grandpa Lewis, I got to question Grandpa Sherman. They're both alive still, both with PhDs, but even before that, you know, they got multiple degrees and they're fluent. You know, I don't know why Grandpa Lewis always talks like that. It says, in that deal, he said that he doesn't, he made it sound like he don't need no punk art. You know, I met so many, I know so many punk people talk to him and they didn't talk no English. You know, I'm talking about people, that's the only language they spoke down here. You know, his modesty makes us look bad by saying, oh, like, he makes it sound like there's no one left. And that's not true. We got people that are 90 some years old, late 80s, early 80s, middle 80s that still speak fluent down here. I got all their names down. But I believe he does our punk of people a discredit by the way he talks sometimes. And then if you guys got to hear that other deal that Grandpa Oliver was talking about, he really did our people a discredit. And he's our chairman. You know, that, that, that following day on Saturday, he spoke highly of me talking about uh, we're going to have a language group, a language uh, department down here. And, you know, he discluded me from everything. You know, even the A&A grants that I wrote in, not Lewis Hedman, not Sherman Bodewier, not nobody else, but Eagle Rod, based on my knowledge and language and culture, he discluded me. And when we were up there, Sister Angie, I don't know if my sister Carla told you, she said, we got the same program that I was hired under. And we haven't even started. To this day, we haven't started it. You know, I made that curriculum before we even before we even before we even applied for that grant, and, and we got so much hardship down here because of family differences, or this family speaks that way, that family spoke that way. You know, because there are different, a little bit different dialect, even amongst us down here. And I know you're you're educated enough in the language. Uh, Sister, that, that if I say Tigakhe Wale or Shkade Wale, if you translate both of them words in English, they both mean let's go play, let's play.
Let's play, but when you say Tigache, that's like a little kid when they're talking about playing, let's play house or let's make believe, you know, but it still has reference to playing. When you say Shkade, Wale, that means let's play. Jeez, traffic is horrible. And so, anyway, when you say that word, that has reference to playing or doing some kind of get together, like an activity with grown ups or children. So, you got a you got a lot of discrepancies on people when they speak and and how to use different words or they talk about coming near now coming to come near something there's about eight different ways to say that and they all in English they all mean come near but at the same time but when you talk punka you'll know when you're using it you're coming near a place that's familiar you're coming to a place where you you uh, know it's there but you can't see it or you're coming to a place that you've never been to you ain't got no Red idea Lincoln's about it US and so you sit there and think about all this stuff in english that it, it might seem complicated but once you start to know the language and you start getting interested in language you got what they call placements and you'll know and so we get we get onto all these different Continue deals in the, la the punk language East when it comes to miles. oklahoma or while they talk different than us and but you don't want to merge all that stuff because see when i was younger i compiled all the things from the different families and there's a lot of families down here that still spoken to this day there's still multiple families that do speak but at the same time they got differences and they won't even come together they won't even come together and so there therefore we have to take everything in and not sit there and let it be uh Something that holds us back is what I'm trying to say. That's getting on. No. You have a good day, ma'am. Happy Easter. And so we have to sit there and compile that. And I don't know how it is uh, anywhere else, just down here. And, you know, and we have to stop that petty crap because there's so much being lost. There's so many stories to be told. You know, by families that you know that ain't in that people. A lot of people in to the modern day they say, "Well, it's not in that Dorsey book," and now they're saying, "Well, it's not in Grandpa Lewis's book." That don't mean a damn thing. There's all kind of stories that we got in the old days that wasn't put in them books. And you know, and we have to get all of them. You got to collect them because we're at a time in our punk uh, way of life that it's almost gone. And we have to fight to retain that. We have to fight to keep all this stuff going because if we don't, it'll be lost forever. We're going to be like the rest of the people out there that lost their language. And there's a lot of them around here. The only thing they got left to hold on to are some of the manuscripts that some uh, linguist or uh, anthropologist uh, thought enough to write. But anyway, let's get back to this Nistanshtan. Uh, you guys got to keep me on track. I got a lot to say. And so anyway, but back to that, you know, they told me stories about that, how we hunt them and, and how uh, uh, if you didn't watch your children and they played by the water, they could get killed and never seen them again. You know, that's the only thing that people would think of. They got ate by alligator. They never talk about no waste of thunder, or no big snakes or nothing, but geez. So we have to, we have to just... Uh, be mindful of all these stories that our old people tell us and our ancestors. A lot of them got meaning to them if you just take the time to pay attention to what they're saying. And so anyway, now I'm going to jump to my uncle. And, you know, some people probably won't like this, but I don't care. I love my Omaha uncle with all my heart. I miss him hearing him talk. And that's how I learned a lot of Omaha way to say things that ain't the same as Ponka. And so anyway, we make here called Harvey Wells, the guy. Uh, and so he told us in the beginning that he said that there was a great warrior named Umpatonga, which is Little Al. And he told us about our, our sacred pipe, and which don't correlate with what the punk happens to believe. And so he told us when we were in the swampland, he stunched on. He said when we were there, we were one big tribe, probably over 100,000 people or more easy, he said. He said, but the thing was, is he said that we had a, a enemy that they called them giants. You know, they, they call them Nyashiga Snedetonga. Nyashiga Snedetonga. Remember that word, Nyashiga Snedetonga. And that just means a, a tall person, literally means a tall person. 
And so anyway, he was kind of story, but he told me in all Omaha. And I can't, I can't say it. I can't talk like these people. I ain't nothing like these flunk, old flunk, bunkers in old flunk Omaha, but I try. And anyway, he told me, he said that we were at a war. He said that we were at a, a great war with giants. And he said, he said, these giants, he said, Nika, Zatema. He said, these, these great giants were cannibals that they ate the human people, our punka people, our Deki, well, he said, Deki, ha. Deki, ha, Nashi, come on. Not dying. And so anyway, he was just talking about that, and I was just sitting there thinking, what the hell is he talking about? You know, because he's telling me in Omaha, and I, and I still understand what he's saying, but I'm thinking, I never heard no crap like this, so, but, and then, so I, I went on, and then he went on, he was, he was telling me for a long time, and so this is a really short version. I got it wrote down in a book that I made uh, while I was in prison. This story is in one of the, one of my stories, and I, I stated who was by, and by the way, his name is Ampashinga. He's from the Kesabe. He's from the Black Shoulder Clan, which is Buffalo. I have a reference to Buffalo's name. And so anyway, Uncle said, uh, these people were eating our people when they killed us and they were capturing us. He said that even though we were so large of a people that they were decimating us everywhere, all our villages that were on the outskirts, he said they took them out took them out, ate them, enslaved them, and then ate them later on. Kept us like animals, like herded us. And he told me, he said that we fought, he said our greatest war chiefs, I'm talking about Nudan Hangama, and he's talking about, he said, they were even getting killed. He said they were killing our greatest warriors. And he said, he said, our people were great warriors. He said, we were great hunters. We were great fishermen. He said, but what we were really good at was fighting. Kinana. Kinana don't come. He said, we were great fighters. That's what it means, past tense. Kinan. Kinana don't come. It means past tense. We were great fighters. Warring on each other. And so anyway, he said that they had a war chief that they, they tried to single them out. In them old days, them old men they talk about when they went into the war party, they said that one of the things that they looked for, they said, they said, Ukite, Ukite ma, what's this guy? Ukite ma means an off tribe. And they're talking about, Connie, go ahead and meet your thing. We can hear you. Okay, sorry. Meet it, sis. Okay, and so anyway, geez, I'm going 80. I got used to the cruise control. And so anyway, he said, uh, he said, Ukitema, uh, Wasisi guy. Okay, that means the off tribe. He said, the off tribes, he said, Wasisi guy is pluralizing one that's really active or one that's really lively. He's getting down on the battlefield. And so they would single him out and try to take out the best warrior. Maybe all tribes did that, but I don't know. But I know the Egihon, the Omaha, and the Ponca, and the Osage and Call and Quapa. I know that we did that. I can't speak for nobody else, but I know we did that. We singled them out. And so we singled them out. We killed them. They said he was big. They said he was a real big man because they called them giants, you know. But they said this guy was just like any other man. It was hard to describe him because they said he, they said that he had human skulls wrapped around his body of our people that were still fresh like a necklace. And so they're thinking, and then one of them guys, one of them guys said, ho, oh, he said, hey, dude, hey, dude, we with the, and he's telling them, he's like, hey, that's one of my relatives. And so he, he took off, he was on foot because back then we didn't have wars. So he took off after him. He got him with a, what they call Mondehi. Monday he's a spear or a lance. He threw it, well, he aimed true, and he hit him, but he didn't hit him dead on like he wanted to. He got him in the shoulder. He said that man, he rushed him with his knife. He had a, some, uh, some type of stone knife. And so when he went in to, went in to get this big man, this giant, this Nyashika, Snede Tonga. Damn, I'm getting hyped up thinking about this story. How my uncle told me, because when you hear it in the language, it means so much more than what I'm trying to Subscribe today.
But when he went there, he got him. He stuck him one time. They said that big man, Yashka Ukele, that, that, that big Indian common dude, they said that he was so powerful that he ripped that man's head from his shoulders. And then after that, they said our warriors, they saw what he had done. Our warriors all went after that one man. It took almost, they said, they said, they, how he said, uh, uh, Gleba Namba, uh, Donshte, uh, maybe 20 of them. And I just didn't have to think how he said it. But it, somebody took about 20 of our guys and they killed him. They brought him down. But he was that good. I'm not saying that it took 20 men to take these people down, but this particular man, he was their war chief. He was their war chief and he was that bad. And so, anyway, they killed him, and once they killed him, they came down upon us so bad. He said, in the days to come, they were pushing us all the way back. He said, he was pushing us back to the swamplands, and they are pushing us into the water. And they said, there were so many dead bodies at that time that the alligator, the, the, what they call Sihiduba, i.e., they were coming from all over because there was blood in the water. And so while they were in there, one of our great war chiefs, he was mortal. This is how he translated it in English because I didn't understand that word he used. I still don't remember what it was, but he said he was mortally wounded. And so anyway, all our holy men, all our uh, they're praying. Why? They're sitting there praying to Wakanda asking him for help because our people, they were so fearful but what was happening, we're getting pushed into the waters where they're getting ate, pushed into waters where people are not returning and alligator everywhere. And then the, the giants are eating us from the head on. And so they prayed, men were fasting, you know, women crying, children feeling fearful. You know, there was a great uh, uproar in our, in our big bands of people all along that, what they call a, uh, Nishu uh, de Tonga, the Mississippi River. Nishu de is the Missouri River, but Nishu de Tonga is the Mississippi River in our language. And apparently, it was a lot bigger than the Missouri. I don't know because I've never seen it. Well, so there are a lot of people that were praying, fasting, they're fasting and on their vision quest on what to do. And then all of a sudden, our runners, our scouts, they're called Wadamba. Wadamba means a scout. Single scout, Wadamba. Our scouts came back, our runners are coming back, and they said that there's a strange sound. And then when we hear that sound, we came upon it. It's a strange beast that we never seen and seen before. But it's standing there, it's waiting for it. It told us to come get our, our leaders and come to it. And they're talking about an elk, because they say in the old days that we used to be able to talk to animals and changing the animals. And so anyway, our war leader that was mortally wounded was in some kind of lodge. He couldn't come because his wounds were so great. And so all our chiefs came together, and they went to meet this thing. And then as our chiefs came there, that was the first time that the Degiha had ever seen an umpa. That's an elk. And you know, when they battle, they make a high pitch whistle, and that's what they were talking about when they heard it. Umpa hutan. Actually, it's umpa zai hutan. When it's really bellowing, make that high pitch whistle. So, anyway, as they all neared, it started coming closer. And as it came close to us, it turned into a man, and he told me, he said, Ho, oh, he's out we talking, Umpa Jinga. He said, Ogle, who are He said, I have come to help you. That's what it means to how he came to help us. And so he turned into a man, and they spoke about him. They said that he had the most beautiful regalia that they have ever seen colors and paints that they never used before. And he told him, he said, don't worry. He said, Wakanda has heard your cry. 
I have come. He said, where's your war leader at? Your new Dahonga. And we had a bunch of them. But they're talking about our main one, and he was hurt bad. They said he was dying. So Umpajinga went to him. And Umpajinga went to him. And he healed. He healed that man. And he told them, and all these people were telling him what he had been doing, how they had been treating our people, how they had been slaughtering us and eating us, and how some of them were strong enough to pull a man's head off of his shoulders. He said, don't worry, I've come. And he showed them a way to find them. And what that way was, I never did ask anymore. I just, when you hear them old people talk, you sit there and be quiet. But I did ask him that one word when I didn't know what it mortally wounded man. I still don't even remember how he said that word, mortally wounded. A lot of ways to say wounded, depending by wounded from a different, from a gunshot, a spear, about three different ways to talk about that, but the way he described it, I didn't understand it. Anyway. So anyway, Uncle Gina taught him, taught him how to do it and what to do and what weapons to use on them. So they got they got that main war chief and he was healed by whatever Moncon that he gave him. Moncon, he, he gave him something. He gave him something. And whatever that medicine was, it brought that war chief back to life to where he recovered. And so as our people prepared for their last battle, because like I said, they were getting pushed into the Nishtashta, to the swamp. Even our women and children had to fight because without everybody, the entirety of the tribe, we would not have made it. And Umpajinga told them, he didn't lead us in battle, but he rode beside our great war chief that God had sent, sent him to aid us. And they said that when we battled those giants, we fought those giants and we killed every one of them but one. They let one woman get away. And every, when, I, when it was all said and done, our war chiefs came together and they were asking, where's Uncle Jinga? They went all over and they finally went back to a spot where he killed a whole bunch of giants by himself, but he was mortally wounded. And that word was used again by my uncle Harvey Wells, the guy. And so anyway, they were talking to Uncle Jinga and they thought he couldn't be killed because God sent him. But you remember, he was an elk that turned into a man. And so today we lost that, uh, what they call Juki day in our Ponca language. It means to tra change, change our flesh, change our body. And that's how we say a shapeshifter, Juki day. And that's what Uncle Jinga must have been. But anyway, he was dying. And as his, as his blood was flowing out, when we fought them, them giants, we fought them all away. Now, this didn't just happen over one night when they pushed us to the swamplands. When we fought them and we were driving them back, killing them. When we finally killed almost all of them but that one female, they was in Pipestone, Minnesota. And my uncle said that all the blood from Umpajinga is what made them pipe quarry, pipe stone quarries in, in Minnesota and surrounding areas where they have pipe stone today. That was the blood of Umpajinga. Umpajinga Wami, I thought. That was his blood. And he told me, that's what he told me. That was the pipe story that he told me that the Umaha had. And he said that in the old days, he said he believed that, that was ours. But I heard it been told how we've been given our five, and so I never believed that. But that story, my Uncle Harvey Wells taught me enough that he told me stories that I might collect them for him because his own children, he had two children called Heydushka and Wallon. Wallon's a word that Punker don't use. It means buffalo chief hunt. That's the one that goes on the buffalo hunt. That's a, that like the new Donhonga that Punker just call it. They, uh, one I'll say, uh, do hunger. We don't use it like they use it, but, but his sons are named Walon and Hedushka. And he, he feared that they wouldn't carry on his legacy. And so he instilled that with me. 
I don't normally talk about Harvey Wells. You know, he was a he was an Omaha man that did two tours in Vietnam. He was a college professor at the University of uh, uh, UCLA, anyway, in California, and, and he was a professor there for 31 years. And he was a two-time, two-tour Vietnam War veteran with a Purple Heart. We have a lot of punkers that do, did what he did, but none of them taught as long as he did. But we got a lot of punkers his caliber. He was still alive, and he knew them. I, I introduced them to them, but. But I love that that man. That man lived with me and my children. My my uh, wife at the time was Leah Kimball. They were both the same clan. He really liked her because they were both Buffalo clans. She's from Shabe and he was E.K. Shabe. So they had a lot in common. You know, Leah also grew up in Macy. She's 45, uh, 46 years old. She'll be 47. But a lot of the way Leah talks, even though Leah grew up with fluent speaking bunker, she still talks like a Omaha because she had heavily influence in her youngest years of uh, adolescence growing up. She learned from them. And there's nothing wrong with speaking like Omaha. Don't ever think there is, because there isn't. We just talk different. And so even with my kid, this mom, when she talks, uh, <laughs> she talks like a Omaha. <laughs> there ain't nothing wrong with that, though. It's cute and, uh, to hear her that way. But her family, pure punka, they talk punka one time. One time, her grandma, I, I said, I said, go. I said, I said, yeah, me ho. Boy, she talked to me so crazy and bonkers. She said, don't you ever say it like that way. But men do talk like that way, yeah, me ho. It, it's a masculine way, but see, some bonkers, they say that when you, when you talk bonkers, don't talk slang because that's a male. That's a male. Like when you say weebla ho. Today, that's the way men speak. That's letting them know that we're really masculine, that if we are, if we're a man, you are talking to a man. So, anyway, her grandma, she got on to me, but she's talking mean bunk. <laughs> she said, don't ever say it like that. She said, when you talk, she said, she said, hang on. Hang on. Anyway, she, anyway, I'm going to just tell you in English. She said, she said, when you talk, she said, talk right. <laughs> she said, hey, on, yeah. And so, anyway, I never said that again because she talked to me like that. <laughs> and her grandmother was, uh, her grandmother was also Washabe. And, but Leah's mother is Wakahebe because Leah's, Leah's grandfather's dad, her great grandfather was a full blooded white man and her grandpa, her mom's dad was half white. Her grandma was full blooded Ponca. And so anyway, that made Leah's mother, that made Leah's mother three quarters Ponca. A little bit less than me. But me and her mother, same plan. But her mother married a man that was a Kimball with the real last name as Nunkuska, white back. So anyway, Leah is from Buffalo Plan, as her mother's mother was. And so anyway, my uncle Harvey Wells, he really took to Leah. You know, Leah could cook good and, and, uh, Made her made her feel good, you know. Made her feel good because you know, even though his his Omaha plan was Buffalo plan and our Ponca plan, she was Buffalo plan. And he has gave them something in common. And so he really looked after my boys, you know. He loved my boys. And so his grandsons, you know, Kevin Rod, his name Shapehunga. Shapehunga means firstborn. He's 26 years old now. It's my son. I was 16 when I had him. And then my second oldest son, his name was William, but his bunker name is Chilaska. In the beginning, we called him Machu, while he, that's the grizzly bear that scares the game. But as he became a man, we gave him my grandfather White Eagle's name, Chilaska. And then my next, my third oldest son is named Brandon, but his bunker name is Mahiska. That's a white stone knife. Today they translate it to white knife, but it's a white stone knife. He didn't really know my fourth son because I didn't have full custody of him, but his name is uh, Marjan Apache. Marjan Apache, he who fears no land, but Uncle Harvey had talked to him in Omaha, and I talked to him in Ponca, you know. And Uncle Harvey used to always try to correct me. He said, you don't talk like that, but he's trying to teach me like an Omaha. 
And I tell my grandpas and my uncles what he said, and he said, let me tell you something. They said, tell me. They said, remember, he's Omaha. He don't speak like us, so don't talk like him. But I actually listened to everything he said to me, and I write it down. That's why I got a lot of stuff wrote down in Omaha. And because he taught me. He, the point what I'm trying to say is he thought enough of me to teach me what he knew. And I added it to what I know from Ponca. And I differentiate it, and I got to separate it so there's no confusion. But I could teach Omaha what he called pure Omaha. And don't think that our Osage relatives and our call relatives and our Quapaw relatives, don't think no less than them. Because they are who we are. The Omaha people, are, as well as the Mother Three, are who we are. And when we get so wrapped up and we have so much prejudice toward one another, that is because of the assimilation and the colonization that we have become today. So when you pray, remember them too, because we're all going through it with our language. We're all going through it with our elders. Out of Egeha, the last two people that have fluent speakers are the Bunka and Umaha, our brothers and sisters of the Barshaje, Gonze, Lugaspa, relatives today that have no fluent speakers left. Today, they have no semi-fluent speakers left. But they're making great efforts, great efforts to maintain their language, to maintain their identity. And so each and every one of you, Robert, Angie, Connie, Robin, Chris, I want to commend you on your efforts of learning and speaking the Ponca language, the Degiha language. It takes great people to fight against something that's almost a losing battle like i told you guys the other day we're the front line we're the last one to hold the line when they say hold the line that is you because if you don't hold that line our language will be gone forever hold the line stand with me stand with gray stand with Stormin. Stand with Braxton, Red Eagle, Cody, Chris, all these different people. Those are people I'm naming in different language departments. Stand with us to hold that line to say we're not going to die out in our language. Our culture will stay intact because we're not going to give up. That's where we're at today. Great men and women like yourselves that are ready to stand and fight. We might not be facing what my Uncle Harvey said. In that way, he said we were facing mortal extinction. But we are facing the loss of a great language. But we still have fluent speakers. We still have semi-speakers. We still have people knowledgeable. We still have hundreds of punka they can sing thousands of songs in our language in different genera of our language because we have different genera like the American people. We got many different classes of uh, song. Many. Many different styles of drumbeat. Some of our older songs, you could tell that they were the songs that we probably sang when we were in the swamplands. That style is way different. You're thinking, damn, I don't even, if you don't, you're like, whoa, this sounds way different than what, what you would think. That's because it was a different era, but we still remember them songs. We still sing them songs today. Today, I'm trying to get over there. I'm almost there. Just about 30 minutes outside of Tulsa right now. I'm trying to put you guys on to see that because this 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 organization, this committee has honored all Ponca. You know, I was supposed to have been there last night, but my baby was sick and I wasn't feeling good and and, you know, I've been out there working in the hot weather after I got done teaching. You know, I work. Even though I'm still hurt, I still try to stay, uh, well, again. I don't want to again. That means I'm still lively and active in, you know, what I'm doing. You know, and that's a verb conjugation. All these, these words that I talked about, if they're verb, they all conjugate. I don't want to again. That means I'm, I'm, I'm still alive. I'm still active, you know. And, and what is this guy? You guys can also still be 
lively and active in what you're doing with the language and whatever your day-to-day lifestyle is you know be that way don't be one that sits there and don't do nothing the punkers punker people always told us they said when you sit idle boy you ain't got you got time to just do nothing but bad and you don't want to do that you want to be active and helping people whether it's uh, cleaning your house or helping cut wood for elders or checking on children that their families are drinking around drugs you know and taking food to them that's what we have to do we have to help one another that way so that story i told you guys was the omaha story and i hope i didn't offend anybody down here i would have offended people but i'm not down here i'm talking to you guys from nebraska to georgia to alabama to north and south carolina and if i offended you i apologize but at this time give me one second hang on man you have a good day man hope you have a blessed sunday tomorrow thank you you're welcome got all these pay tolls at this time i'm going to turn it over to my uh, sister my sister uh connie connie and i come from the same people and you know uh, today she's going to read uh from grandpa lewis edmund's book we're going to go about our our christian songs and how how the church became to the punker because in the beginning the Ponca had four churches. That was the Ponca Indian Methodist, the Ponca Nazarene, the Ponca Baptist Church, and then the Ponca chapter of the NAC, the Native American Church, with Ponca, the original name I was told in the dictionary, don't say that, but I was told, Moncon A-T. That means those that come in the house, the medicine, and the other word they use is Moncon A-T, those that eat medicine. And so anyway, Connie, go ahead if you can. I don't know if you got good reception today, but I'm going to turn my camera off and mute myself. But listen, Connie, okay. uh, we're going to, uh, somebody holler at her if, uh, if she else lose reception sometime. Sean. Will do. Go ahead and put our camera on too. Thank you, guys. Let's see. Um, Albert makes cry. Let me go, let me go to where. I've been looking. Um, you want to go start from the whole, well, let's see, the Christian church and the Ponca community? Yeah, just start. It's going, to be about, it's going to be about our people when we came down here. Okay. And at that time, our uh, Ponca from Nebraska were with us too in some parts of it. Some parts of it, they were back right. up north. Okay. But, but go ahead and read it. Like chapter 21, though, the Christian church and the Ponca community, is that correct? I don't know. I just... I just told okay. you to read out. I ain't got my book or nothing with me. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm just going to start reading then. Hopefully I'm in the right area. And if I'm not, somebody flap their arms at me. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm in chapter 21. Once again, the Christian church in the Ponca community, the logical sequence of good missionary work had to begin with learning the language of a non-English speaking people. Reverend James O. Dorsey, a linguist, evidently learned and spoke Ponca fluently. The Ponca people called him Dazi. He was one of the first missionaries to come to the Ponca in late 19th century. After being ordained deacon on 18 April 1871, he was sent as a missionary of the Protestant Episcopal Church to the Ponca Indians in Dakota, where he remained for two years. He lived near and among the people. Although a missionary, he's mostly spoken of by modern day historians as a linguist and ethnographer. However, as a missionary, he's remembered by the Ponca as using various methods in teaching Dorsey, according to the, uh, in teaching, excuse me, period. Dorsey, according to the elders, used stories from old literature to convey certain moral and ethical Christian teachings. In this particular case, he used tales from Aesop's fables. Okay, these tales were told to children along the tribal Higa. He probably used the fables because the Ponca Higa were stories about animals that also taught morals and ethics. Some of us learned them from grandmother, uh, VBSH, I'm not sure who that is, who never spoke nor understood English. 
The morphology of Dorsey's work on the Degiha language is exceptional. A note made in his, quote, Omaha and Ponca letters, um, that's a publication, indicates that some Ponca men at that time learned to use his alphabet to write letters. So began the introduction of Christianity among the Ponca Indians. Because of the direct relationship of one Edward Howe, H-O-W-E, to the Ponca people, the following account of the church is elaborated on. According to Eugene Howe, in the early 1920s, Reverend Edward Howe, in the, uh, excuse me, Eugene's grandfather, was assigned to the church near the Ponca Agency near Niobrara, Nebraska. His records show he was catechist, C-A-T-E-C-H-I-S-T, catechist for the church. Um, he was one of five brothers born to George Howe Sr., who was known by the Ponca as Nobdesna which is uh, translated to scarred hand, like you have a scar on your hand. He had one sister by the name of Hannah. Reverend Howe was married to a half-breed Ponca woman by the name of Emily, who bore him several children. Of those, those who came to Oklahoma in the early 1900s were Oliver and Elmer Howe, who married two sisters, Maddie and Agnes Hedman. His other children were Marvin, um, nicknamed Buzzy, Loretta, Myrtle, Elsie, Pam, and Viola. According to Reverend Howe's diary, he recorded church data each Sunday that included attendance, offerings taken, baptisms, deaths, and so forth. On one occasion, because of the cold winter, he became stricken with sickness. In his diary, he wrote that he requested help from the church members to cut wood for the heating stove in the church, but no one responded. On another occasion, he wrote to the Diocese of Nebraska requesting assistance for repairs on the church building and some damage on the road to the church. The following letter from the RT period, Reverend Ernest V. Shaler shows his response to that request. I apologize if I'm not, um, I'm not up on the, how that goes. Um, the uh, actual letter dated July 11th, 1928, uh, the Diocese of Nebraska, Omaha. Dear, my, my dear Mr. Howe, I have your letter and regret that I have no funds whatever which, with which to meet its appeals. The Dio, Dio, I'm sorry, the Diocesan Council in January did not put a single dollar at my disposal for additional work in the diocese this year or for emergencies. Since my visit to Niobrara last Sunday and seeing the splendid gathering of your people there, I have been thinking that they ought to do something toward the support of your work. I discovered in my conference with them and practically all of them own land and could help if they would. We do not appreciate the things that cost us nothing as much as those for which we have to work for or pay for. And giving to the support of the church and to others is an important part of the Christian duty. It's not right that you should do all the work and the giving of your time and they do nothing. With Kind regards, I am yours sincerely, Ernest V. Shaler, signed Bishop. There were other times when members of the church did simply, excuse me, did supply wood for the church. Times were difficult in those days as he recorded the offering on one Sunday as being only seven cents. On another particular Sunday, he wrote down that Meshadalyn, the wife of Little Duck, had died. She had been baptized by the Reverend James O. Dorsey. Uh, at the time, he had come to the Ponca people in about 1871. It was recorded that she was the oldest living Ponca tribal member at age 115 in Niobrara on April 13, 1925. The funeral service was held at St. John's Chapel near the old Ponca Agency, Niobrara, Nebraska. Reverend Howe served as, I'm sorry, catechist in charge for the funeral service. Other missionary endeavors in the 19th century ushered in new religious practices, espousing a theory not unlike that which the Ponca already possessed. The only other religious leaders who came into the Ponca territory in Nebraska were the Mormons mentioned earlier. According to the elders, their main interest in the area evidently was to find shelter. Since they were seeking refuge, they showed their weakness and never had any Ponca converts. However, most exponents of the Christian faith during that period in the history of America considered anyone not adhering to its teachings as per its set of standards as heathen, sinner, or both. John Wesley, the founder of Methodism and the advocate of Christian perfection, came to the east coast of America trying to convert Indians. 
His conclusion was that they were hopelessly lost and were not worth the time. Acculturation and a new era of civilization brought about disregard for the main thrust of the Ponca religion, which was their pipe. But there were many who retained their belief in their own religion and continued to follow their ancient practices of praying to Wakanda according to the old Ponca customs. During this period, when the Ponca showed interest in other religious faiths, the tribe was in a state of mass confusion over their land sand possible removal to Indian territory. Christian apparently provided a peace of mind to show those who followed this early missionary's teachings. This, in effect, aided the people seeking new ways to live when they moved to Indian territory and into the 20th century. Uh, next par next uh, section is called the Church in Indian Territory. Because the Methodist missionary had traveled with the Ponca to Indian Territory, the tribe set aside two acres of land for the construction of a church building. The tribe built a Methodist Episcopal Church at the Ponca Agency, which is now the White Eagle Community. Other religious advocates of various denominations made their impact on the Ponca Reservation in Kay and Noble Counties in Oklahoma, but those Protestant denominations establishing churches were of the Methodist, Nazarene, and Baptist faiths. Today, some Ponca have joined the Roman Catholic and Pentecostal churches. Few have membership in other faiths or cults. The Ponca Protestant churches on the reservation have features of worship that are similar in many ways. This is primarily due to the tribal cultural pattern. From ages past, the people were taught to show compassion and understanding to their fellow man. Prayers and praying were always a part of their daily lives. Giving encouragement and moral support to people in need was and is commonplace among tribesmen and women. The Ponca churches function similarly to any Christian church throughout the world. Their Sunday morning order of worship consists of singing service, special songs, choir numbers for special occasions, special prayers for people, projects, and so forth, the sharing of tithes and offerings, and preaching. Messages from the pulpit inform, challenge, and inspire, as in most churches. Since these churches are also connected to their various denominational ministries, they are assessed financial responsibilities. These monies are directed toward denominational mission products, evangelism, hospitals, educations, institutions, and so forth. Although inadequate, these churches also pay salaries to their pastors and pay for all utilities of the church and parsonages. Every year, the churches select their appropriate delegation for their particular denominational annual meetings. The Methodists. Uh, the Southern Ponca were Christian, uh, excuse me, Christianized primarily under the missionary work of the Methodist Church. In the early years in Indian Territory, the church fathers established a congregation. Its constituency was modern, excuse me, mostly women. The constituency was mostly women and children. In later years, a gymnasium was constructed and most tribesmen assisted in the construction of this building. Uh, preachers and evangelists. Some of the missionaries who came among the Ponca were Mr. White, Mr. Magner, Mr. Baker, and Mr. Kling in Smith. That didn't really sound right, but in Smith is two different words, like coming into something. In the early years of mission work on the reservation, an evangelist by the name of Mr. I. G. Martin came to hold a tent revival among the Ponca in 1903. An interesting turn of events occurred at this meeting, as recalled by KH, uh, KCH and uh, Albert Makes Cry, Mr. Martin claimed to be a Nazarene. The Church of the Nazarene was not yet known by that name. While he was preaching, Mr. White became upset, slammed his Bible down on the pulpit, and walked out. To this day, no one knows why he became angry, but they remembered the incident. We, of course, are aware today that the Church of the Nazarene was organized by discontented Methodist preachers. In modern times, some church historians say the split came because of the, quote, slave issue in the 1800s, while others say it was a contemporary thought in Christian theology. Is there any, uh, do you guys mind if I take a five minute break? I've got one, one really quick. Is that oh, okay with you? Yeah, that's, that's fine. fine. Just as okay. a, here's some history for that part when they talked about Reverend Howell. His, they talk about his half breed um, wife is Emily, and that's Emily Knutson. Oh, and okay. Emily Knutson's dad was Otto E. C. Knutson, and then his, her mom was Mary, <laughs> the daughter of Chief Tubals. Oh, cool. 
And so that they come down from that line of uh, us, us Northern Poncas, there's, you know, over half of us have our ties back to that Mary Two Bulls. Or a lot of times we'll refer it back to Knutson, but that's how that's that family line there. So just that's some, really awesome. I've heard that name, but I wasn't sure, you know, being over here where I'm at, I wasn't sure, but yeah, that's really good to know. That's awesome. Yeah, that name Knutson and that name Larvey, we used to have them in Punk down here in White Eagle, but they died out in my lifetime. I need five okay. minutes, guys. I'll be right back, okay? okay. Sorry. Okay, sis. So, anyway. You know, they're talking about in that book, you know, to me, it sounds like in the beginning, it seems like there was no other way but Christianity. You know, they took everything from us. I mean, I don't know. Uh, what do you think about that, Sister Angie? You know, it seemed like uh, it was almost hopeless. It was almost, almost I just called the car driving crazy beside me. It was almost hopeless in a, a lot of ways. And uh, just thinking about. Man, they took us from our land. They gave it away. They, we, you know, in 1908. I mean, it's, I don't know exactly when, but some books say 1908. Some things say 1914. They took our Sundance away from us, which was one of our main uh, reli religious uh, beliefs. You know, they took everything from us. We couldn't hunt. We got spoiled meat. Uh, they were giving us liquor. They were doing, I mean, horrific things to us. So it makes me think, I mean, it's either, almost either death or Christianity. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but but it's something that changed a lot of people amongst the Ponca. And we still have Ponca families that are not Christian, that detest Christianity, detest uh, anything to do with uh, white people and and. And me and Sister Connie, one of our, our family, our majority of our family through them are that way. And I want you guys to know, if you don't know already, I believe in Jesus as a, me personally. I, ain't, I can't speak for nobody else. I believe in him. When I pray, I pray, pray in his name. But a lot of my family, you know, when I go into Upeati, that's how I was taught to say sweat lodge in Ponca. Now in the dictionary it says uh, I don't know that way. I never was taught that way. But I guess that's another way to say sweat lodge in our Ponca language. And if you don't understand the language, upe means it's a uh, it's an action by stooping down when you're entering and somehow on top of dwelling. Upe. And so, e upe, when you put that I in it, has reverence to do it by, by means of entering in a certain way, in a particular manner. That's what that means, e upe. And when you say upeati, that's talking about a house that you're entering in a stooping position. But uh, that's how we say sweat lodge and, and, I, and before I forget and our sweat lodge is our oldest religious belief it's our creation our creation of mother earth I can't speak for no other tribe but the Ponca when they talk about the womb of mother earth that's Ponca that's pure Ponca everything else follows Sundance different uh, dance societies different organizations different religious beliefs everything follows Everything follows sweat, uh, sweat lodge. There's nothing before that. Nothing. And so anyway, back to the Christianity. Uh, and it's up to you guys to believe that way. Or you believe in our traditional ways or the old ways. There's nothing. No, I, don't, I can't say there's nothing wrong with it being judgmental. But it's just how one believes. And I grew up with traditionalists in my family. And I grew up with Christians in my family. And when I used to go to Sweat Lodge, I pray in Ponca. And so anyway, some of my relatives would tell me while while I'm praying, they tell me in English. They couldn't even speak Ponca. But when they heard me say, Wakonda Ijinge, Wakonda Ijinge, 
That's the son of God or, or Jesus, you could call it. As soon as they heard me say that, they'll tell me right there in the sweat lodge down there in our timber, in the west timber by the Nijit Day, by the Salt Fork River. That's where we sweat at. We got a lot of sweat lodges. That's one of them. And so they tell me, take that to the hill. Take that to the, the hill up there and pray like that way when you're in church. And I told them. I said, at least I could pray in my language. And I said, I said, there's no man could tell me how to pray. And I continue on. And, you know, they were real mad about that because they didn't believe in Jesus. And so I went through some things about my faith. But I never let that deter, deter me from what I believed in. I believed in our Ponca tribal ways, and I believed in that. I sit and dance. I go to Sweat Lodge. I never went to a punk of ghost dance or any other tribal ghost dance, but I participate in everything. That's who I am. But my belief, how I believe, is in Jesus. And down here, there's people that, that love it and there's people that hate it. But you got to be a man or a woman and however you feel comfortable in what you believe in, that's what you do. If you truly believe in something, you can't let people deter you. You can't let people make you afraid to not believe in that. You can't let them change your mind. That's where we're at today. When Connie comes back, come, before she comes back on, I'm going to sing a song. A lot of Christian songs, but not enough. I don't know all of them. There's a lot of them. And, uh, Angie, did you get to hear that song we made? Yeah, was it two days ago? Chris, what was it, two days ago we made that song? Yeah, that was uh, uh, went three days, like Wednesday. It was Wednesday, I think. Yeah, I haven't heard that yet. Well, anyway, anyway Angie, we made that song. And I sing it one time through. I think I got it, but it goes... <clears throat> Hey, those come on it. 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 Hey, we jammed that song the other day, though, and I don't know if you guys, if you're, you might be well enough to translate that song by now, and you're pretty good now. Run that one. I don't one. know if you can translate that for them. Run that and one. I'll just tell you. I'm gonna talk. Was screaming too. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, it's hey, it's hey, hey, Lushka. but in the song when, when you talk Ponka. You say, hey, Dushka, when you're talking about it, but when you sing it, you say, hey, Dushka. So it said, hey, Dushka, manite. And it's repetitive, five, a total of five times saying that. And one, well, really about six because you got your second. And then you say, it's, shange, shabe, wahu, babe, oh, hey. Hey, Dushka, manite. So the Hedushka walk of life, or the, um, and then what was it, Shonge? You said Shonge? What? Yeah, yeah Shonge, Shabe, Wahu, Be. But in the song, you say Wahu, Babe, to okay. make it fit. So, um, the sacred black horse? Sacred brown horse. You're brown. close. Shabe, <laughs> Shabe, Nas, Shabe. Okay, Shabe. Shabe, yeah. Okay. So, but so anyway, you know, uh, one of our uh, Ponca modern day chiefs, she understands our language well enough to translate that, and that's what she just did. You know, uh, when it says, "Hey, Doshka, money, shonge, shabe wakube," it says, "Sacred brown horse, your way of life is like the Hey Doshka," and that's what we sing when we say. Hey, those come on it. 
Hey, those come on it. Hey, 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 oh, hey. Song, hey, song, man, walk home, my man, oh, hey. Hey, those come on it. Hey, oh, hey. And that song we made that, you know, we're making, you know, that was my goal. And, and what I talked about to some of our, well, actually the majority, or if not all of them, on the language and culture committee. And, but you got to hear it when we play the drum, you hear how we hashed it out until we got it right. And I still don't feel like I sang it right because I got my drum with me. Uh, and anyway, even though, even though that's not, a real life person, but maybe we could make that Shange Shabe Hube sacred brown horse. Maybe we could make that into a society up there. Because, like I said, societies are born from the people, and we are the people. And we could use that as our society song of our language because we never talked about naming a language, our language deal, you know, instead of just calling it the Ponca Language Department. We could call it the Sacred Brown uh, Horse Society. And it all started with our language and became who we are today. You know, I'm not saying that we have to do that, but I'm giving you guys ideas on how we make things and how things come about. And my, I'll take it off first, so I'm going too fast. And so we have to do that. And, and I made a lot of songs in my lifetime, and a lot of these old ones down here, they're like, who made that song? I never heard that song before. I said, I made it. I'm good enough in our punk language to make songs. You know, I help people make songs and these younger punkers and men and women get in. That's what we're going to focus on, making them songs because we have to honor them, our modern day words that way. And another thing, when I was naming off these different people in these language departments, I, I, for, I failed to forget, uh, mention my sister, Vida Stabler, up in Macy. And then my sister, Arlene Walker, up in Lincoln. I don't know if she still lives there. You know, there might be others in that, but I'm just naming off ones that I know in my my lifetime. That are five. And my Grandpa Lewis and Grandpa Sherman. And, uh, but anyway. Go ahead, carry on, Sister Connie. I was going on too long. Go ahead. No, it was good. I was enjoying it. You're doing great. <laughs> just drive and be careful. Okay, we were talking... Um, we were up to preachers and evangelists. I'm going to go ahead and redo this um, beginning of this little paragraph in this area real quick because I don't want to get lost. <laughs> uh, preachers and evangelists. Some of the missionaries who came among the Ponca were Mr. White, Mr. Magner, uh, Mr. Baker, and Mr. Kling and Smith. That was, again, weird. Um, in the early years of mission work on the reservation, an evangelist by the name of Mr. I.G. Martin came to hold a tent revival among the Ponca in 1903. An interesting turn of events occurred at this meeting. As recalled by K.H., K.C.H., and Albert Makes Crime, Mr. Martin claimed to be a Nazarene. The Church of the Nazarene was not yet known by that name. While he was preaching, Mr. White became upset, slammed his Bible down on the pulpit, and walked out. To this day, no one knows why he became angry, but they remembered the incident. We, of course, are aware today that the Church of the Nazarene was organized and, excuse me, was organized by discontented Methodists preachers. In modern times, some church historians say the split came because of the, quote, slave issue in the 1800s, while others say it was the contemporary thought in Christian theology. The many Indian ministers who pastored the Ponca Church included Reverends White Parker, Lynn Powdy, Lee Mota, Robert Penzadadbley, I'm sorry, I butchered that, Robert Penzadalby, I'm going with that. I'm sorry. Um, Tony Hill, Melvin Boyle, Kevin Edmonds, Gibson Davis, Levi Big Goose, Thomas Roughface Sr., uh, George Miller, Abraham Jackson, and others. The church's first called Ponca Indian minister in modern times was Thomas Roughface Sr., serving as pastor of several churches for years. Uh, he was made the general superintendent of the Oklahoma Indian Missionary Conference. Other Ponca ministers coming from the Ponca Methodist Church were Levi Big Goose, 
George calls him Jr., Stanford White Star, and Edward Henman. About the turn of the 20th century, a punk man by the name of James Williams attended a school on the East Coast and became the first punka ordained as a minister. According to the elders, his ordination fell under the Presbyterian Church. It's unclear whether he served as minister under that denomination. He was educated at Haskell Institute at Lawrence, Kansas, Hampton Institute at Hampton, Virginia, that's where I was from, and Dartmouth College at Hanover, New Hampshire. Williams returned to the reservation and was known as an excellent orator at public gatherings. Although the majority of the Ponca people claim membership in the church, there are those names of church members that stand out predominantly. Since about 1940, these former members, who are now members of the church triumphant, include Aileen Roy, Ellen Roy Sear, C-E-R-R-E, Molly Roy Sear, C-E-R-R-E once again, Mary Horse Chief Kimball, Cora Burke Cry, Nellie King Blueback, Christian Blueback Others, Dorothy Blueback Buffalo Head, Lewis and Maddie McDonald, William and Helen Overland, William and Hattie C. War, Francis, uh, male Francis, and Alice Eagle McKinley, and Luc Lucena Eagle, Stella McDonald Yellow Horse, George and Alice Smith, Mitchell Roy, Cornelius, Cornelius and Cordelia Hardman, Alice Grant Primo, Lamont and Lucille Feathers, Lily Big Goose, White Tail, Leona Big Goose Rough Face, Vernon and Theodosia Robertson, excuse me, Robert Roberson, Roberson, I'm sorry, Theodosia Roberson, Stanford and Faye White Star, George calls him Jr., Levi and Francine Eagle Big Goose, and Thomas and Patricia Rough Face Sr. Like other churches, the modern Ponca Methodist Church is composed of the children and grandchildren of those former members. In recent years, a new church building was constructed under the auspices of the St. Paul's United Methodist Church in Ponca City. A beautiful sanctuary, chapel, and education classroom building, the old mission gymnasium still stands. The Oklahoma Indian Missionary Conference of the United Methodist Church normally conducts its annual meetings at one of the three district centers located at Preston, Antlers, or Anadarko, Oklahoma. In the early years, only a few people from the Ponca Church attended these meetings, but one man always attended the Methodist Annual Conference. According to Bishop Angie Smith, who is now deceased, Lewis McDonald, also deceased, they were the, uh, was the only representative present from the Ponca Indian Methodist Church attending these conference meetings. According to Bishop Smith at the Hog Creek District Center at Anadarko, Grandpa McDonald always got up and came to the front of the congregated church representatives and sang a traditional Ponca Indian church hymn. Afterward, he would, re he would report to the conference. As the Ponca Methodist Church grew and became more involved in the conference, many members began to attend these annual meetings. The youth programs in the three Ponca churches were very active for years. Each sent young boys and girls to summer camp. The Indian Methodists originally sent their children to Turner Falls. Then the denom denomination, excuse me, established a camp at Lake Texoma near Kingston, Oklahoma. The Methodist Indian Conference boys and girls from the Arapaho, Cheyenne, Comanche, Uchi, Ki Kiowa, Pawnee, Ponca, and five civilized tribes attended the senior high camp. There they played, studied the words, sang, and generally fellowshiped with one another. This week of fun for kids helped raise fine Christian men and women. The Methodist Church, which is now United Methodist, has a long-standing relationship with the Ponca tribe of Oklahoma, and they are very enthusiastic about their church functions. Everybody here okay? Robin, you okay, honey? Okay. The Nazarenes. The first Nazarene ever to come to the Ponca tribe of Oklahoma was a man by the name of Mr. I.G. Martin who at the time was working with the Methodists as an evangelist. About 1903, at a camp meeting, he preached to the Ponca people. Even the chief of the tribe attended and was converted. In about 1937, according to Albert Makes Cry, a man by the name of Brother Smith came to the Ponca reservation from Blackwell, Oklahoma, to hold services. The story goes that as he walked down the road, he asked different Ponca men and women where he could go to hold these services. Someone directed him to David and Suzette Buffalo's home, saying, Go over there to that house. They will let you conduct services there. 
So it was there the Nazarene Church got its start. In 1939, the Church of the Nazarene organized a mission church on the reservation under the supervision of the Reverend Mr. Luther Cantwell. Its first pastor was Reverend Amos Coma, K-O-M-A-H, a Comanche Indian from Cache, C-A-C-H-E, Oklahoma. Some of the pastors assigned to the Ponca Church were Reverends Bass, B-A-S-S, -S, King Barney, Partain, oh, excuse me, King is separate, Barney is separate, Partain, Curtis Shook, Carol Wilbanks, Richard Martinez, Nino Buffalo Head, Bradford Golding, Edward Satilla, Lula Morton, James Browning, Samuel McAtee, Julian Gunn, Lloyd Hughes, Charles Young, and me, which is, uh, I assume, the author, Lewis McDonald. I'm sorry, Grandpa, Grandpa Lewis McDonald. Is that his name? I can't remember. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Headman, Headman, Grandpa Lewis Headman. I'm so sorry. Uh, Let's see. The first Ponca ministers entered the ministry from the church where Albert Makes Christ Sr., Nino, Nino Buffalo Head, and I uh, see Tony Sayre and me. The membership of the church has never been more than 60 people. Attendance, however, has exceeded 100 in different years. During the war years, which is World War II, the church had no pastor. Albert Makes Cry and his family assumed responsibility for the church and continued church services. Albert Makes Cry became recognized by tribesmen as one of the best public speakers and composer and singer of Indian hymns. His son, Albert Makes Cry Jr., attended the Southern Nazarene University, which was then Bethel Peniel, I'm not sure if that's right, at Bethany, Oklahoma, and ultimately became the choir director of a large Nazarene church in Oklahoma City. The first frame church was constructed with money received from what the Nazarene church called quote, alabaster offerings, according to Albert's, Albert Makes Cry. The men folk of the church were primarily responsible for the labor. In the 1960s, a new church building was constructed with the church's own money and labor. With the help of Reverend Samuel McAtee, a Potawatomi Indian, and Mr. Pontiac, a Saginaw Chippewa Indian, both from Mount Pleasant, Michigan, the church was built assisted by church members Millard, Ben, and Paschal Sayre, C-E-R-R-E. -R -E. The building is small and seats about 125 people. Some members of the past who are now members of the church triumphant include Helen Washington Little Dance, whom uh, she donated land for the construction of the first church. Albert and Beatrice uh, Papan makes cry. Prudence Pr uh, Primo Rush. I don't know if I got that right. I can't remember names. <laughs> Primo, excuse me. Prudence Primo Rush. Suzette DeLodge, Buffalo Head, Mitchell and Dora Fireshaker, Sear, Gary and Martha Fireshaker, Blueback, Emily Fireshaker, Page, Marcella C. Warwaters, Dora Eagle, Eugene Eagle, Edna Little Dance Primo, Ben and Edna Sear Waters, Pete and Ada Grant LeClaire, Perry and Nora C. Bear, Genevieve Washington Pollock, Bernadine C. Bear Roy, Evangeline Little Dance Weddell, Nino Buffalo Head, Ben Sear, Pascal Sear, Vanola Sear, Rosa mm, Rosboro, Julie Sear No Ear, Ernie Blueback, Adolphus Warrior, Leroy Warrior, Anthony Tony Warrior Sr., Susanna Makes Cry White Eagle, Marion Sear, Elizabeth Blueback Goodman, and others. In modern times, those leading the church, yes, am I doing okay? The okay. last name is pronounced Siri. Siri. Okay, I knew I was doing it wrong. Thank you, Eagle. Siri. C E R R E. Siri. I apologize to anyone um, with that name that I might have offended. I apologize. Um, in modern times, those leading the church include Hazel Makes Cry Headman, Clarine C. Bear Arkakita, Millard Siri, Siri, Virginia Buffalo Head, Louise Roy, Dolores Waters, Decora. Decora, Levon Hedman, Steep Rock, Carolyn Steep Rock, Christina Kimball Simpson, Paula Buffalo Head Mendoza, Nathan and Edith Rose Primo Johnson, Bruce and Christy Johnson, Tamara White Eagle Bear, Cynthia White Eagle, Galvis White Eagle, Rolf and Virgie Sue Hedman Clements, and others. The Church of the Nazarene District Assembly for the Indian Churches was held annually in different locations. In the early years, the Ponca Nazarenes, who owned an old gray school bus in the 1940s, would take as many people as possible to their annual meetings. 
These annual meetings were held in either El Paso, Texas or Albuquerque, New Mexico. The elders said that attending this annual meeting was planned well ahead and was worth waiting for. For the Ponca Church, every member saved enough money for food and gasoline for the bus. Church members got to see new places and meet other Christians. Following the inception of the North American Indian District, Church of the Nazarene, the Indian churches had their annual meeting in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Some of the tribes attending the meeting were of the Arapaho, Cheyenne, Cocopa, Comanche, Laguna, Pueblo, Maricopa, Mojave, Navajo, Tejano, Odam, Odam, I can't pronounce that one, I'm sorry, I, I butchered it, Pima, Ponca, and other Pueblos. Each tribe had its opportunity to sing in their language. Albert Mick's cry led and sang Ponca hymns with other Ponca delegates. They put harmony into their translated hymns. This was enjoyed by all tribes attending the annual meeting. Apparently impressing the Southwest Indians, they were referred to as the quote, singing birds of the plains. As, as these meetings became more centralized, Albert Mixcroft always took at least three carloads of church members to the meetings. The Nazarene youth always had their summer camp at Navajo, New Mexico. In the beautiful mountain setting, these children learned of God through songs and the Bible with boys and girls from the Arapaho, Cheyenne, Cocopa, Comanche, Laguna Pueblo, Maricopa, Mojave, Navajo, Tejano, Odom, I know I'm butchering it, I'm sorry, Pima, Ponca, and other tribes. At camp, they played games and fished at the lakes. The Ponca Church is now the Northwest Oklahoma, is now in, excuse me, the Northwest Oklahoma District, Church of the Nazarene. Although many members of the church and other tribal members did not want their relationships severed from the fellow Indian Christians in the Southwest, the future of this, the church is promising as young men and women come freely to join hands in this fellowship. Uh, shall we continue with the Baptists or are we running out of time here? Are we doing good? Well, we still got a hour and a 16 oh, minutes. Do we? So you're doing oh, okay. Okay, I thought we had 10 minutes left. Okay, I'm good. All right, let's roll. I'm, I'm hauling, listen, I'm hauling ass so you can see all these punkas singing and dancing over here, but I don't know. Can't we wait. We don't try. <laughs> it's a good day for it. It's a good day. All right, honey, be safe. Uh, the Baptists, let's roll on. Um, the first Baptist work among the Ponca started in 1923. Mrs. George English of the Shalako Indian School established a center of a sort at Ponca City that continued for one year under the supervision of Reverend M.B. Hurt. A building was erected for worship purposes in about 1927. Money was donated by the Osage Baptist Church. It was during those years when the oil wealthy Osage had shown benevolence by helping other struggling churches, including the Poncas. The Southern Baptist Church began its formal mission work among the Ponca in 1926 and was organized in 1927 by Reverend C.C. Bowles, B-O-W-L-E-S. In 1928, Reverend A.W. Hancock became the pastor of the Ponca Church. Assisting, assisting in that work was also a woman by the name of Miss Mary Sharp. Reverends Thomas Wamego, John Stone Road, Bruce Conrad, Jasper Sonkey, Jonas Dyson, Alan Corbett, Eddie Lindsay, and Ted Freeman were some of the pastors assigned to the Ponca Church. The church has, <clears throat> excuse me, also had interim retired pastors from other churches. In the early beginnings of the church, some of its first members included Mary LeClaire Gayton, Eva LeClaire Primo, Maggie Ledoux, Grace Little Warrior, Maddie Hedman Howe, Lula Hedman Thicknail, Nellie Hedman Jones, Agnes Hedman Howe, Beulah Running Over Water Roy, Lizzie Makes Cloud Roy, Baptiste and Lizzie Delage, Leland and Bessie Poppin Sr., and let's see, Irene LeClaire Warrior, Henry Snake, Eugene Howe, Isaac Hedman, Dwayne Buffalo Head, Carmel Howe Roy, Alice Howe Fisher, and others. <clears throat> excuse me, one of the most fascinating functions of the church was the water baptism that took place once a year down at the river. Everyone wanted to get baptized and each person had a different story to tell concerning their baptism. The congregation met faithfully in a one room frame building until the 60s when a new sanctuary was built. The construction of a fellowship hall and classrooms by its members has added much needed space for activities. 
In modern times, the church leadership consists of the following Douglas and Lillian Papan Eagle, Papan Eagle, oh my gosh, Thomasine Grass Blueback, Dewey and Dolores Stans Black Crane, Molly Papan e uh, Eagle, excuse me, that was three, one, one lady's name, Molly Papan Eagle, Michael and Susan Crane Cornell, Tully Redcorn, Susan Williams Freeman, Dorothea Walking Sky Blueback, K Walking Sky and others. The Ponca Indian Southern Baptist Church, being an autonomous body, normally sent their reports to the local K County Baptist Association and to the Oklahoma State Baptist Conventions annually. Okay, the new paragraph is talking about other churches. The Roman Catholic Pateri Circle, K-A-T-E-R-I, and I apologize, recently organized under the auspices of St. Mary's Church in Ponca City, and they uh, has well-organized meetings and is drawing more Ponca people. Their meetings and fellowships occur once a month. They are bringing into the church the rich Ponca traditions of song and scriptural readings in the Ponca native language. The leaders of the group are Betty Pinsano Primo, Vanessa Knight Good Eagle, Ted and Ruth Knight Felix, Phyllis Rush, Darlene Pinsano Harjo, and others. The Ponca Full Gospel Church, a recent church organized by local tribal members, has services every Sunday. This church organization is the most recent of the Ponca churches. A man from the Pawnee, Oklahoma area probably initiated it. His name was Sam Young. Mr. Young was a leader of this independent church movement, that is, people who followed his belief, oh, excuse me, this belief. The Ponca men who knew him said he was a godly man who spoke the truth of how a man should live. He had held prayer meetings among the Pawnee people, as well as in other parts of the state. He and Mr. Thurman Buffalo Head, who is now deceased, a member of the Ponca tribe, led the beginning of the Ponca church. Its membership is composed of Mr. Buffalo Head's family and other relatives and close friends. Next paragraph, the singing church. Since the Ponca people have always had special interest in singing, each church has their special, excuse me, each church has their favorite singers who add to the worship experience on Sunday mornings. Some of these talented soloists from many years ago were Albert Makes Cry Jr., Robert Others, Mitchell, C I'm sorry, Siri, Mitchell Siri, I apologize, Maynard Hinman, Thomas Primo, and Alex, Alice Howe Fisher. They sang in most of the Ponca churches until their demise. Jesse Fisher, son of Alice Hal Fisher, is a talented singer and businessman. He is one of the great grandsons of Edward Howe, who was a priest at the Niobrara, Nebraska Episcopal Church. Barbara Wilson and Tony mm, Siri, Siri sing on special occasions in various churches. The Nazarenes were the first to compose and sing Ponca Indian hymns. This was probably due to the leadership of Re Reverend Amos Coma, who sang traditional Comanche Indian church hymns. The first members also translated many, many Indian hymns, excuse me, translated, the first members also translated many English hymns into the Ponca language. The early church members were inspired to compose unique Ponca Christian tunes by the ancient prayer songs of the people. Albert Makes Christ said they held special prayers to find the words and tunes for the Ponca traditional hymns. These particular tunes were not used, but were inspirational in that they gave impetus to creating new and meaningful Christian songs. The original tunes were prayer songs uttered in the private setting to the Creator. Cross-culturally, the words in the songs related clearly the Christian message to many non-English speaking Ponca. In the order of worship, songs were sung thematically, that is, appropriate songs fit the message, scripture, or occasion. Some songs were made for various worship experiences, such as regular worship services, revivals, and special prayer meetings for the sick, funerals, and birthdays. The songs can be categorized as praise hymns, thanksgiving hymns, funeral hymns, and hymns for the altar call or call to Christian discipleship. These songs normally were and are sung through two times. From the early 1940s on, Ponca men and women who were members of the Ponca churches, including the Native American church, were actively involved with the religious and spiritual needs of their people. Some composers who are all deceased of traditional hymns included Albert and Beatrice Makes Cry, Robert and Helen Little Dance, Prudence Primo, 
oops, lost my page. Suzette Buffalo Head, Tom Primo, James Clark Sr., Harry Buffalo Head, Napoleon Buffalo Head, Lamont Brown, Francis Eagle, McKinley Eagle, Cornelius, excuse me, Francis Eagle, the male Francis is one name, and then McKinley Eagle is a second name, Cornelius Hardman, William C. War, Logan Seary, George Smith, Mitchell Roy, and William Overland. According to Albert Mixcry, the tunes came from songs of the ancient past. He stated they were prayer songs to Wakanda called captive songs. Uh, I'm going to let Eagle deal with that one. Nagde Wa'a. He said these kinds of songs were sung in times of extreme hardship or some perplex perplexing situation. Uh, the following is an example of a praise hymn composed by Robert Little Dance. Um, this is in Ponca and English. I'm not going to butcher the Ponca language, so I'm just going to read the English part. Um, the title is The Son of God is Worthy of Praise. And the song uh, follows. The Son of God is Worthy of Praise. In my walk of life, I praise you. Son of God, healer, savior, worthy of praise. In my walk of life, I praise you. The Son of God is worthy of praise. In my walk of life, I praise you. Hear me, my God. What you have done for me, you are compassionate and worthy of praise. The Son of God is worthy of praise. In my walk of life, I praise you. Hear me, my God. What you have done for me, you are compassionate and worthy of praise. The Son of God is worthy of praise. In my walk of life, I praise you. Hear me, my God. That was the end. The Ponca Nazarene Church always has a mini choir. Each generation in the church has, at one time or another, sung in the choir. For example, in 1947, the choir was composed of Genevieve and Drew Little Warrior, Edna and Allison Waters, Perry and Nora Crazy Bear, Rachel Makes Cry, Ethelene and Evangeline Little Dance, Lucille Little Voice, Melvin Buffalo Head, Eugene Eagle, and Albert Makes Cry Jr. The current members are Lewis and Hazel Hedman, Clarine Arkakita, Virginia Buffalo Head, Christy Simpson, LaVon Steeprock, Paula Mendoza, Edith Rose Johnson, Jennifer Feathers, and Bruce Johnson. The following is a translation of the hymn titled The Savior for Me. Once again, English version from me. Um, the heaven above, he made us, excuse me, I'll start over. The heaven above, he made a great provision for us. Jesus came to be Savior. He gives us life through his agony. Jesus, you came to heal my spirit. He has sent forth his calmness. Jesus, in tiredness, earthly, you have sat without earthly help. But the Father is there to help. Jesus, you came to heal my spirit. Jesus is the great Savior. Your compassion is truth. We praise the spirit you gave. We have made you the truth. We cling to you, Savior. And that was the end. Uh, for over 100 years, the Christian church has been actively involved in the lives of the Ponca people. There has been some resistance to the church by some tribal members. This is understandable because of the high morale and ethical values taught by parents and tribal er elders in past times. It's been said by some tribal members that the Christian church is not teaching anything different from what we have been taught. However, as we enter the 21st century, these teachings have all but disappeared, leaving ch the church a great responsibility. It will be up to the younger generations to pick up the torch of moral values and ethics. We are seeing the younger group grow as they offer special prayer needs for people celebrating birthdays, graduations, marriages, and other tribal events that take place. They also request prayers for the success of students in school and work and at work and play. People who are in hospitals or in rest homes or are shut-ins are also remembered. The churches are destined to survive because there is always a need somewhere. And that is the complete end of that complete chapter. On to chapter 22, um, Eagle. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold it, though, and wait on your input. <laughs> Well, that's a pretty good rundown that my grandpa kept a real good uh yeah a record of all these people that were pastors that came to our tribe and even while we were still in nebraska and south dakota you know and i think it's a beautiful thing when you when you guys get to where you're going to understand our language and listen our songs ain't 
Our songs ain't real complicated in Christian hymns. And there's a few that it might be, but most of them are just basic. Hey, uh, oh, excuse me. Oh, driving makes me tired. A lot of them are just basic, you know, uh, telling what it is, you know, help me. You know, like, uh, I'll sing you, let me pay this pay and I'll sing you a couple of them. And I don't know, like I said, I hope not to offend nobody that's not Christian. That ain't never my intention to offend nobody hanging with that. Really, really quick while he's doing the tolls, um, I want to apologize if this, I don't know if this is being recorded, but I am super sorry for anything I couldn't pronounce correctly. If I had uh, had a chance, I would have looked all this up and made sure I had the right pronunciations. So once again, I apologize. Yeah, I can record it. We transfer over to the... That's no worries, Connie. You, you, you do well. You read well and flow well, so... Yeah, we've Thank you very much. in public. Thank you very well. Thank you very, very much. I appreciate it. That means a lot. Yeah, you did a better job than I would have. So thanks. I don't know, Robert. You have a great voice. <laughs> you do. Okay, we would keep you could stay off camera, Robert, too, if you ever wanted to read. <laughs> the only way I can actually go really? on camera is if I steal Diane's. And I'm like, oh, I don't want to do that. It's in the other room. Well, read away, Robert. You have my blessing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks. Go ahead. What do you mean, go ahead? <laughs> We're waiting I on you. Told, I thought you told him to start reading something. I <laughs> Yeah, I was. You were into something. You were. You were gonna sing. We were stalling while you paid tolls or moved around. Yeah, it was just. It was just me giving my apologies for butchering uh, some names. No, you're good. You're fine. Okay, look, I'm gonna. You gotta tell me when I put it right here on my uh, belt. Can you guys hear me if I sing right? Here? Yeah, I can see I you. So. It sounds good to me. Yeah. Can I see your head. I think so. <laughs> when, I, when I was a little guy, they told me this was our first punk of a song. <clears throat> Walk on the car, hey, ho. Walk on the car, hey, ho. Ain't I hey, ho. Walk on the call, hey, ho, walk in the hunger, hey, ho, walk on the call, hey, ho, hey, 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 walk on the call, hey, ho, hey, ho, Walk on the Walk on the Walk on Walk on the car, hey, oh, walk in a home, hey, oh, hey, oh. walk on the car, hey, oh, hey, oh. hey, 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 walk on the car, hey, oh, hey, oh. Oh, 
ju mafi wada bitamani wada bitamani oh edi wedi da ho da di da ho mani dai ho edi wedi ya ho adi da ho mani Awesome. I lost it. <laughs> I lost that song. That was my good. That's sad because my, my own grandpa made that song. <laughs> uh, are any of these um, uh, recorded from somewhere? They have these old tapes, you know? I wonder yeah, if they're, these are... down, down here, they're everywhere. I wonder if I could find them because I have you a bunch of You missed your job, Eagle. That's what it is. Yeah, the... that's what it is. No, I just haven't, I don't sing all the time like I used to. You should sing. Sing while oh. you're driving. Hang on. Wani day, iyu dega, we blah mamli. Wakuni edita halam kiyu dega, we blah na mamli. Wakuni edita halam kiyu dega, we blah na mamli. Wakuni edita halam kiyu dega, we blah na mamli. Walk on the edita, how long you dig? We blow the mommy. Walk on the edita, how long you dig? We blow the mommy. One day, you dig, we blow the mommy. Walk on the edita. Jeez, I lost it again. Anyway, don't give up, apologize. For you back home, that I haven't, you guys know I haven't been singing a lot. You know, I'm talking to people back here because they watch all of these. They watch it like a Bible. So, relatives, pray for me to teach our relatives up north better. And when I make a mistake, overlook me. Some of these songs I haven't sung in a really long time, and that's not an excuse. I just, it's just, uh, it's on me. That song, it says, it says the word of God is good. Yeah. It says, walk on the e e u da. It says, ki u da. It says, e u de ga. It says, the word of God is good. It says, goni de mani e u de ga. It says, it says, Savior, your life is good. It says, the word, it says, Savior, your life is good. The word of God is good. Thank you. Or I praise you because we belong. Really means I praise you or I pray to you. But today, that's the closest word we got to thank you. I don't know why. This is one of my favorite songs since I was a little bitty kid, and I keep jacking it up. So I'm going to stop on that one. I'm going to sing one last song and hope I don't mess it up. But I'm human. I make mistakes like everybody else. But a lot of times down here, they, they call upon me to sing. But I'm glad that, you know, I don't know what's wrong with me. I don't know. I just got a lot on my mind. But anyway, we're going to carry on. But like I said, relatives, uh, uh, Punk in Nebraska and Punk Oklahoma, overlook me, forgive me. 
I pray that I, I get it right when I'm singing or I'm talking, teaching. You know, we're all human. We make mistakes, but sometimes people try to crucify me when I make a mistake. So overlook me. These are the holy days, oh, we blow, oh, mommy, oh, we blow, oh, mommy, oh, we have, mommy, care, yeah, we care, we puff, yeah, we blow, oh, mommy, oh, we blow, oh, Oh, we have mobly tega, we can we pantega, we blah, mobly, we blah. Jesus, oh, holy day, oh, we blah, mobly, oh, we blah, mobly. She was having a hard time in her life too. She wasn't living a good life like I was. This was probably about 15, 16 years ago. Not about 15. And uh, anyway, uh, a lot of them people that my uh, sister Connie read off, a lot of them people they named off were her people, her immediate family. She's dead now. And uh, one, one, her mother and one of her grandparents came to me one day. Just, well, they didn't come to me. We just happened to be at the same place, but they walked up to me. And, you know, her grandma, her uh, grandmother talked punk, but her mom just understood it. And, you know, but she could still say stuff, you know, but she understood it fluently. And she said, hey, you know, I thought they were going to say stuff to me, you know, because, like I said, I didn't live a good life. Tell these past uh, 14 years is the best I ever lived as an adult. My... 44 years and so anyway they said we just want to thank you and I said for what they said uh, they said our daughter came home and she sang the song to us and you know them being they were all singers too they're singers Don't, I forgot to mention that they're singers and so anyway you know, make it all short. You know, they thank me for uh, teaching their daughter that song. And uh, I wasn't living a good life. Like I said, you know, I'm just really, it's really hard, you know, when you, you live a certain type of way for a long time and then you change and then I reflect back on my life how I was that you know that even in all the things that I did that wasn't right that you know elders would come to me and tell me and then, and I knew the language back then I knew the songs back then just because you know our language and our songs don't mean that you're going to live and be a good person it's just like in English 
the American society. A lot of people are bad people or, or know a lot of things and they still do bad things. Well, it's the same way in our punk culture, and I'm one of them. But I taught her that song, and then not too long after they told me that, you know, she died. And when she died, you know, it was really hard for me to accept, you know, because I had a relationship with her. You know, even though I said she's my friend, it's true, she was my friend, but I also had a relationship with her. And I told her, I said that, uh, I told her, I said, uh, you got to go. I said, I'm not living a good life. I said, I want you to live and have a chance at life by, uh, by going and being around different people than people like me. And so she did. And then one day she called me out of the blue. And, you know, she was talking a little bit punker, you know, because I taught her punka. You know, she had it in her, fa her family, but a lot of us down here take it for granted. And when you hear punkers, they don't, they don't care. And so anyway, she said, can you come pick me up? I want to go pray, you know, because I ran sweat lodges for everybody down here. Even though I didn't live good, that's still what I did. Like a bad preacher, like a preacher running church service ain't good, but I was a bad leader of the sweat lodge and different things because I didn't live right. And she just told me over and over, can you come get me? She said, I want to pray with you. She said, let's sing, let's pray. I want to pray. And I told her, no, I told you to stay away from me. I want you to try hard to live. And she's like, no, I want you to, uh, I want you to come give me a prayer. I didn't want to short, I didn't go get her. Three days later, they found her dead. The day that she wanted me to come get her, she left to try to come see me, and she died. And the more to the story, these Christian songs and things about what I just uh, testified to you, when people call upon you to help them, don't turn them down. I didn't make that girl die or cause her to die, but maybe if I would have went and picked her up and and got the sweat lodge ready and prayed and called people to come smoke the pipe with us and all these other things, and also I'm a Sundancer, then, then maybe things would have been different for her. But only God knows. But I carried that baggage around with me for a long time. And today's the first time that I could talk about it without crying. So I know that I'm growing spiritually. But we're almost to our destination, so we still got about 45 minutes, so hopefully I can get you guys to sing. I'm supposed to have some seats reserved for me. I chose not to sit at the drum. Uh, but they got a place for me here. So hopefully... <laughs> Hopefully it's already started and they're doing good. And you guys can see because all these singing, there are going to be a lot of tribes here, but Ponka are the one singing, head man dancer, head woman dancer, and also one of our Ponka members of the Buffalo Clan. He's also one of the organized organization's leaders. And uh, he's putting this on. But there's a lot of other tribes going to be here probably. But our drum is the main main drum or the only drum might be the only drum but a lot of times the things like this where they got competition so there's a competition there's going to be people from everywhere come uh, i don't know with the with the rain being so bad here you could tell it's flooded in some parts where i was just past the streets are flooding but it's not raining thank god but yeah we're almost there i never been to this place where i'm going i had to use my Google Maps on it. But so, like I said, whatever belief you believe in, believe in it. You know, I believe to have a healthy life, a healthy balance is to eat right or eat the best you can, exercise when you can, pray every day, though. And then learn to sing. Even if you feel like you got a, I got an ugly voice. I got a lisp. Had a lisp since I was a little guy. Some days I don't really show, some days it does. But I do the best I can when I talk, but my lips don't ever show in my language, though. Only in English. Turn right onto North 17th Street. 
So, remember, God has use for each and every one of you. Sometimes we might not, uh, sometimes we might not always listen when God wants us to do something, but do your best to try. Try hard, you know, in Ponca we call it Washtongo Ho for a man. A woman, they say Washtongo. I passed a lot of Ponca cars and some Ponca cars passed me already. So we got a lot of, uh, a lot of people coming down here from White Eagle, from different parts of Oklahoma, wherever Ponca's at, because we're scattered. Don't think that there's 4,000 some Ponca's all live in White Eagle. Not even half, not even a quarter of us live in White Eagle. I don't even live in White Eagle no more. But we live everywhere. Just like up that way, you guys are everywhere. Whoa, whoa, whoa. God dang. What the hell's wrong with you trying to run in front of me? Jeez, that car tried to run right in front of me. Then get mad at me and want to honk back at me. But anyway, God watch over a Nadi Hobokonda. He will come to. Well, he's done with the Nadi Hobokonda. He's a guy called Ijanje. He's done. He will move the Hobokonda. It's good. You take it. So, but we have to be careful. Stay prayed up no matter what you do. Because let me tell you something. There is crazy people everywhere. And we could fit in that same category. But just try not to be crazy. I'm in the, I know this area. I've been here before, but I don't know this staple center here. But I'm in the all black area. Last time I came there, boy, there's people everywhere selling drugs and string out. But I guess because of the rain, there's nobody here. Thank God, maybe they changed their life over and changed us. Burned down houses. Pretty rough looking right here, but I bet it was beautiful at one time. But I'm in an all black neighborhood, and there's like good black people to say, I know a few of them. I'm just trying to get to the destination. No, I see, I'm straight, I'm going straight up. I got about another two or three minutes to get there. I've never been here before. At this, I mean, what I'm talking about, I've never been here. I'm talking about the Staples Center in Muskogee, Oklahoma. I've never been there. Eagle will be back in a minute. Okay. Okay. Well, if you guys got anything to say, uh, Angie, Robert, Chris, and uh, Robert, are you gonna take a break. We are to have an open discussion to, to make a comment. However. Yeah, I just need to switch computers. Oh, okay. But it's open, and when you guys are ready to, the floor is open to any of y'all. Connie, the floor is open about what we talked about, what I said, what you read. About songs we okay. did or the story I did. Any, anybody could say something, whatever. Okay. Thank you. I tried to get on my phone outside because my dog had to go out and it wouldn't. So I'm sorry about that. But I finally made it in. Okay. Yeah. You had asked earlier, Eagle. Oh, about, my question you know, some of the songs. Is Go ahead, go ahead, Con. No, please, please go ahead. I can do mine any anytime. Thanks. Yeah, you had just asked about you know the influence of or Christianity as far as the impact of who we are as a people, and you know it's that Christianity's influence started you know back here, back home. You know, we're up in Nebraska and South Dakota, and um. You know, and one thing to kind of talk about is that it, it really, you know, had an impact as far as the changing of our mindset. And, and then it also affected, it affected our language to a sense. Because, you know, our, our, our language, our culture, our, the way we think is, is, you know, is innately Ponca. But once we get that influence of that Christianity and, um, you know, now like mainstream society, it, it's it's altering our language in, in a way, in the way of the context of how we, we use those words. And that's why, you know, for us that are second language learners, we're so used to uh, English, you know, American English. And then, um, you know, right. I, how a lot of people are Christ, Christian, raised Christian as well, that that, you know, that changes our our mind you know how we think and so then we're 
it makes it difficult for second language learners because we're right. thinking in that mindset and trying to shove Ponca into that thinking where we have to really abandon that and go and think Ponca and then we can incorporate, you know, how as we learn, you know, we're going to be able to pull in and say, okay, it means this in English and that. And eventually we'll get to that point where we, we don't have to have think English first. And I, I remember the day where I was just out and about driving and, you know, I seen something and the first thing that thought came in my mind it was the Ponca word. It wasn't the English word. And that, that was a really great moment. You know, that was, you know, that moment where, you know, it may, it's probably had happened before that I hadn't realized it, but, you know, it just dawned on me that, you know, I didn't have to do that going from English into Ponca. And um, I think sometimes, um, you know, it we really had a, a big push on Christianity. And part of that was, you know, I don't know, to be, it's that full assimilation, but to fit in and, um, you know, it it really has had an impact because it, it's changed that mindset of how we are. I guess I, I kind of rambled there, kind of went all over, but it, it really has had an impact and it's it's been a long time now. And, um, you know, we had our own, our own ways and our own, um, if you want to say, it's not, I can't even say it's religion, but our own way of understanding how we came into this world, where we come from, how we go about our relationship with everything, where we go when we die. There's, there's that own, its own concept. And that's, I'm not saying it's totally different than from Christianity, but it, it's different. And I get, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not a Christian and um, there's nothing wrong with people if they choose to be Christian, but that, that's, to me, it's, it's different than, you know, following, you know, the traditional punk away. And, I know we've touched on this before that to kind of to be traditional, you know, that that's kind of lost too, because, you know, then it's true sense because we've so been so heavily influenced and things have changed over time. And, you know, there's been a lot of things that um, have been lost or it's been so hard and there's not uh, people to carry that on. Cause it's a, it's a heavy responsibility that takes a lot of sacrifice to be able to carry those ways and, in a sense, we've we've come uh, like a weaker people. You know, we're not we're not able to carry those those heavy burdens in the way that we did in the past. And it's not saying that we can't. It's just that they were so heavily influenced by mainstream society. And um, you know what we had we had our we had our own ways. And uh, if you even if you're a, a Christian you really follow your Christian ways, you know, they talk about you can't believe in that other people can be saved and by following other ways. They're not, they really can't be saved. That They can only be saved by following, you know, Christ and Jesus and God. And otherwise there, there's no sal- salvation. I think it's actually, I, I don't know it as well, but just on a sermon, I went one time to a, um, I think it was a Wisconsin Lutheran sermon, but it made sense in there that they talked about you have you have to truly believe that the only way to be saved is through Jesus Christ, and otherwise you're not a, like a true Christian. And um, you know that's people talk about walking in both worlds or being a Christian and following tradition, and that's uh, that's a, that's a hard thing, and that's for each person on their choice of how they they believe they would be able to do that, you know. Um, there's this, there's so many things that, you know, there's a lot of influence that has changed the language and um, and changed kind of our changed our ways of things, and that's just kind of how evolution of time has been as well, you know, as we have moved from area over and you know, that's just the, how it is, is we have evolved the people we change with our times and our circumstances. And, you know, that's a quality of, of being Ponca that, that we've, uh, we've adapted and or been able to, you know, not just survive, but to thrive in the different ways and knowing that we've lost a lot though, too. And, 
you know, that's, it's changing who we are and that's changing the language some, and we want to hold on to as much as we can and, and have, you know, talk about those teachings be as strict as we can with the things that we do have. But yet we recognize that there's, there's family differences and individual d- differences on being descriptive, like the Eagle talked about that explaining how different things are, how they appear to that person. So, and there's just so many ways within our language that we can describe things that, um, you know, that just because it gets written down in the book one way doesn't mean that that's wrong or another way is is wrong. It's just that there's so many ways to describe things. And then, like Eagle explained, there's so many things that we're so much more descriptive and contextual. Like it's it's in the moments of what's surrounding and what we're connected to and what what's around us or what's our, our relationship to whatever is going on and that's a little bit different in, in english so i know there's just so many elements that really impact our our language and our ways that you know it's a complex thing to to understand to live and you know the more we can learn about everything and um even even though you know like i'm not christian i still appreciate and enjoy reading the passages in that book about who's everybody that was in the different churches and you know there's still the carrying of their our language within those songs and there's still that influence and stuff in there so um you know it really speaks to what eagle said that we, we got to take in everything you know incorporate and record that and incorporate that and to learn it and take it all in because it, it's all valuable stuff so um i kind of rambled there i apologize <laughs> but I just, I, I really appreciate it. I, I really appreciate everybody that uh, gets on and um, I haven't been able to get on as much as I'd like to. And I've um, been watching the recordings and going over those as well. So, and um, appreciate Eagle's time and everybody here and I'll stop rambling. I apologize. No, that's good what you said. Like I said, we have to reinforce with each other with what knowledge that we have. And, and it is not... <laughs> It's not that I know more than you guys, because I don't know more than everybody. You know, I know some things, and and what I do know, I teach it. And I was also lucky or blessed, one might say, to write down and be around so many fluent speakers throughout my lifetime. And, you know, and now, and you can't knock that, you know, and even you, you are relatives up that way. Your origin started from up, up that way, just as mine has. You can't, uh, hold yourself thinking you don't know nothing or your family didn't know nothing or whatever it may be, you know, because there's words that I hear some people say that I didn't really know, you know, and then I ask and people will tell me, those are handicapped, geez, I don't know. There's a lot of punkers already here in Tonkwa, but really these Tonkwas ain't Tonkwa, they're punka. They just switch around. <laughs> and you guys listen, know I'm down the truth when you get to hear this recording because a lot of them listen to it. They switch roles so they can get money. <sighs> money and everything. But you got to work. In this day, in the old days, you know, doing the whole lesson about the old days, that you, uh, you could have lived by the land. But now, today, we don't know what that is. Today, all we got, we have to work. You got to get gas money. You got to pay for your cell phone. You got to pay for your insurance. You got to pay for everything. You know, uh, uh, Ida the blue girl. Uba, say that. Say, Ida the blue girl. Uba, say that. You have to pay for everything. Ida the blue girl. Uba, say that. Uba, say that. You have to pay for everything. Uba, say that. My my uncle. Was a bit ad, big ad, advocate on this name, Harry Buffalo had lived here. His first language, all these people were talking about their first language was Ponca. He was for a second. And he was really, uh, I didn't even know he, when he talked, I never even heard him talk about Jesus. But after he died, I read things about him. <laughs> he believed in Jesus, and that's, a, that's good. It's good if he did. You know, but, well, and so anyway, 
he used to always tell me about a lot of stuff. He used to like to tease me about his nephew. You know, there's a hard relationship between uncle and nephew. Or even a niece and an aunt. But, you know, back here, my my name growing up is Eagle Boy. There's very, probably about 50, 60 people that maybe a little more that still know me by the name Eagle Boy. Good out news, you know. And so anyway, he was one of the ones that used to give me hell. He used to call me Eagle Girl. You know, he wakes up all the time. Huh? We can call you John Boy, Walton, yeah. John Boy. I remember that too, the Walton. But anyway, he used to he used to tease me. Him and a lot of my other uncles, they would tease me when my parents or the elders or grandparents. Oh, uh, I don't know where I'm going. Uh, where we go to get in over this way? This way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can come in right here. This is back. I've never been here before. Okay. I don't know if I turn this camera around. We will take it, oh, take, take it on the tough task for us. Thank you. <laughs> take it on okay, this hard task. Look at this. We got a little bit of bead work and some other stuff going on here. Ooh, pretty. Shiny. <laughs> Ooh, feathers. That's the same bunker bead work, though. That's bead yeah, work. It's pretty, though. It's pretty. Beads, beads, beads. That's all see from y'all see. How do I turn this camera around for my phone? You got a switchy button somewhere. A double tap huh? button. See if that helps. I, I think that you have to um, switch it on the camera. I know before I rejoined, I had a choice for which camera I wanted to use. I don't know if you can do it on the fly. Okay. Or I'm just going to turn it around. We got I'm like just some woodwork here. Very it's nice. Different, yeah, different Eagle. Eagle, you can do it if you the little gear down the the right hand side of the screen. It'll pop out and it'll give you the choice to do the camera front or the camera rear. Okay, I just hit something that says sound notifications, color and vision off, amplify, ambient sound off. That's the speakers. You want to do the camera. It's over. The microphone's on the right-hand side of that screen when it comes up. On the left-hand side, it's the camera front or back. At least it is on my app. I don't know if it does the same thing on the phone or not. I okay, mean, I found something that says start presentation, media info, raise hand, number pad. That ain't it. Mm-mm. Uh, yeah, like on mine on the computer, it has camera, and that gives me an uh, only the option I have is um, like my my camera on my computer. But you might be able to see front facing or rear facing on your settings for options. I got a little settings. Yeah, I could see your finger. I don't know what side you were on, but if that was on the opposite side, I can see your finger. I'm going to try and join with the camp in my phone. I'm going to go in another room so I don't echo. Oh, I found it. <laughs> awesome. Good job. Eagle Rod can be taught. <laughs> yeah, Eagle taking up the hard tasks on our behalf. Thank you, brother. <laughs> Doing all the work. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. I don't know what some of that is. Uh, it's just beads are, beads are pretty to me. Oh. Uh -huh. I love beads. You guys got my blankets and what we got going on here? <laughs> Ooh. Up here. How much you guys selling them for? Uh, what about a four five? Fifty. What size are them? How much are they? Yeah, state card. Hey, let, let me get that one right there. I'll take that one. Well, I like that color. I'm just going to buy this little blanket right here. It's a queen size. The queen size, yeah. So we're buying some, uh, they're not Pendleton's, but they're just, everybody buys them at all the dances. I got yeah. one at the Air Powell. 
I got a black one with the light with the pretty blue on it. The bright. What's blue. up with you guys? Talk talk. Okay, damn, that's your area, huh? Well, I don't know. I don't know this area, so I don't know. I'm punker, punker blue. I'm Muscogee. Muscogee huh? A lot of punkers are down here. So we came down here. The head scene, they're all punker. Head man, head lady, and then you got a higgle. Then you come down and we also have about three or four thousand people every time. Every time. You, you ever Google learn the history of Powell? That's where it originated from was Whitey Go, Oklahoma. Yeah. Hold on, as soon as I'm by this blanket, we're gonna go mob around. They got benders all the way around. Why they're, they're, well, they're setting up anyway. Hey, Eagle, I'm gonna have to excuse myself now, but thank you for today. Yeah. Right. You're yeah, welcome. All right. We belong. Oh. While she's doing that, let's see if we can see anything. We have different people. Like I said, it's just now starting. Actually, it didn't start yet. They're just getting their stuff together. Seven, four, six, zero. Seven, four, six, zero. Oh, seven, four, six, zero. One. Oh, oh, seven, four, six, zero, one. I left off the one. I'm tripping. <laughs> yeah, I'm living in La La Land, I guess. Yeah. How'd you get that already? That's just cool. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I want a bag. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Hello. I was just looking and browsing and window shopping. That one's kind of cute. I need me one of those tablecloths. <laughs> hey. $10. Which one's Bigfoot? All of them? Oh, they all got a little no. Bigfoot in. You can pick them up. Let me get that one right there. Go on. First of all, did you take cards? Oh, yeah, I did. Let me take it. I'll take that one. I'll give them away for gifts. I'm buying gifts, people. This is the right place to buy them. Yeah. It's a good place to buy them. What tribe are you? Oh, Seminole Creek, okay. That's my name. That's my business name right there, Seminole Creek. How do you uh, say Bigfoot and Creek or Seminole? What do you speak? Hunker? Hunker? Yeah. What does that mean, Hunker? Uh, like I'm a monster? Yeah. That's like a monster, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, in our language, we call it Indah, then yeah, I mean Bigfoot. What tribe are you? Hunker. Hunker. Yeah. Eagle. Yeah. Did you say Indah then? Yeah, Indah then. Indah then. Indah then. What word was that, Robin? I missed Bigfoot. It. What word is that? Bigfoot. Bigfoot. Oh, Bigfoot. I'm sorry. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I always turn my head at the wrong moment. <laughs> Oh. oh, I want to freak in. Let me get in my pocket. Let me get you. Man, I'm a pen collector for real. 
そのスープ。スープ。スープ。スープ。How much are your braces?、Uh, these are three. These are five.、Uh, these are anklets and necklaces. I haven't got them out yet. Okay, let me have this one, this one. Okay. Yeah, and then let me have that one. I want these two right here. The purple and the pink? No, this one right here. That、are、one? Those two or the pink one? And this one. These three? Yeah. You take card, I got cash too if you don't. What tribe are you? I know, I, just, I don't know why I asked it. I see it on your, your deal. I see you guys are celebrating. Yeah. So we done bought from、uh, Muscogee, Cree, and now c h e d u k i You have Cash App or Venmo? I got Cash App. Let's do Cash App. Okay. I thought you said those are five. That's got like, what does that mean? Oh, it's a, oh, it's a size. Okay. I was like, God damn. I was like, yeah, okay. Okay. My, my、uh, money sign is money,、uh, money sign Eagle E A capital E.、Or、let me type it in. I'll type it in if you don't mind. Yeah. Okay. E capital E. Can you mute for a second just so you don't, you don't record, record that、this. for everybody to get?
guys hear me? Oh, yes. Nikki. Yeah, I can hear you. That's my uncle. He's coming to sing to us. I think Pinto Lee was one of my singers, yeah. good singers for years. And that's his son. They're going to be uh, singing. His other son's got what they call a head man dancer. And then Emily, a lot of you guys met Emily. She's someone I date. Uh, she's the head lady. I don't know where. Right now, I see some punkers are showing up. Oh, nigga. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, bro. Yeah. Uh, so we're just waiting in early. I know. Where's Steven? <laughs> he supposed to be head head senior. <laughs> yeah. That's okay, you got it if he ain't. Okay. All right, Uncle. Yeah. <laughs> Here comes Emily. Wait, take it to the bathroom. You don't have to. You see this guy? Look at him. We're recording. Stay out of my class. Hey. Oh, ho. look at him. They're waving at you. He is awesome. He's so darling. Hi. Hi. <laughs> He's acting up. <laughs> <laughs> He's embarrassed. He said, I'm going to cry around. I said, don't worry. We'll go to the bathroom and have hella fun. <laughs> He's embarrassed, dog. I like teasing him. He's beautiful. Okay. We're getting ready to start. I don't know if you guys want to. Look on and what I might just put it on my Facebook because I'm about ready to shut this down because my time's almost up. Oh, okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Yep. We got I'm our good. we got I'm our little good. jewelry. We're in. All right. I'm ready with I got whatever my you do. Necklace. All right. You got to, can't have too many of those. With my sister. Hang it from your car deal. Your deal on your car. <laughs> Why do I have? Mm -hmm. Looking at the All right. Hey, we're looking at Emily. Here comes Emily. Can y'all see Emily? Wave at him, Emily. Hi, Emily. Look at that beautiful fan. Show that fan. That's a spotted. Uh, <laughs> yes. That's a golden eagle. A spotted tail of that. Hmm. Beautiful. Yeah. Your grandpa yes, stuff. Yes, Laura. Dress. Beautiful. That's said to your dad. Oh, no, she's not in her dress. Your grandpa. All this is your grandpa. That's what they told me. That's what I'm sitting here. That's me and Crabbags right here. Tom, hi again, Crabbags. Hi. Hi, baby. When you guys say it's cry baby, that means cry baby. Oh. Look at this one. This is what Emily's going to be dancing with. That's going to be, that's beautiful. Who made that? This right here is a highly, highly wanted and favored fan right here in the Punka culture. Beautiful. Is a beadwork on it? Oh, my yeah, word. is that Piety? Yeah, we're good. Heidi, wow. yes. Beautiful. Is Emily going to change shortly? There's some of the singers her. right there. Hold on. I don't want to see her regalia. Oh, it's over there. I'm tripping.
Did you say Ozone? So a, lot of our, so a lot of our Poncas are just now showing up. Our Ponca seniors, are some of them are here. Are there Ocho? So I don't know if they're going to have an open or closed drum. If they have an open drum, that means anybody can come sit out. If they have a closed drum, that means only only Poncas can come. So I don't know how it's going to be here. But anyway, I love you guys. And if you guys want, I'll put it on my Facebook once we start. It's good okay. having a good morning with y'all. Love y'all. All right. Yes, it's good. please. Bye. Have fun. Be safe. Yeah, happy Easter. Bye, guys. Bye. Happy Easter. Bye, Robert.